In today's video, I'll be talking about Nivexa. It's an investment portfolio tracking tool that helps you track your investment returns from stocks, funds, and crypto, all from one simple place. If you want to have better visibility of how your investments are going, their tool might be of use to you. Make sure to watch right to the end as I show you every screen in the Nivexa portal. I also have access to a discount code to get 20% off your subscription. There is a lot for us to unpack in this video, so let's get into it. First, let's talk about how Nivexa came into existence. In 2017, the founder of Nivexa, a senior developer at an Australian bank, developed an early prototype for Nivexa. He wanted a tool that helped him understand the true return of his investment portfolio. Only when his friends gave it a try did he realize its potential. He then left his job and worked on Nivexa full time. Today, the platform has over a thousand paid users, attracted by its sharp pricing and focus on showing a portfolio's true performance. As you'll see later in this video, Nivexa's UI is very intuitive and investors get a great view of their returns broken down by capital gain, currency fluctuations, taxes paid, and dividend income. Nivexa also takes a community approach to their product development pipeline. On every page of the portal, they openly ask their users to suggest new tools and features to build the platform together. They also have Android and iOS apps, which makes it easy to track your portfolio on the go. If we look over at Trustpilot, Nivexa has a rating of 4.6 out of 5 from over 140 reviews, which is market leading for portfolio tracking. Reading through some of the comments, some of the themes that keep coming up include fast customer service, cheaper pricing than alternatives, and frequent upgrades to the platform. Looking at some of the less favorable reviews, they include users getting confused by upgrade emails, some brokers having slower load times, and product suggestions. It's good to see Nivexa replying to many of these with suggestions or to reach out to them via email. On the Nivexa website, they even include the founder's email, so getting support as a user appears to be solid. The vast majority of users appear to be from Australia, with a few others in there from the UK, Singapore, and the US. Nivexa was founded in Australia and support many investment classes. Firstly, they support over 7,000 cryptocurrencies with all of your favorites. Second, they support Australian managed funds, which include the likes of your super funds. Third, they take care of all of your stock market investments in Australia, the US, Canada, and the UK. To be specific, they cover everything listed on exchanges that you can see here, both stocks and ETFs. This list is constantly being added to, but it covers the main markets used by Australian investors. Kiwi investors will notice that NZX is missing from this list. For the time being, it isn't covered by Nivexa, but if enough people make a request, they might just build it. And to round out the list of supported investments by Nivexa, you can add your cash investments as well as the long tail of non-exchange investments, such as venture capital, investment property, and anything else that requires manual updating of values. Let's now jump over into the platform for a walkthrough. When you get started in Nivexa, this is what you'll see. We have a demo portfolio to test the platform and the option above that to add a portfolio. Clicking that button, we can select a few options to customize our first portfolio. We can select a name, our tax residency, and when our tax financial year ends. If I use Australia, this updates to the end of June from New Zealand's end of March. We can also disclose our tax entity type and change our calculation settings. One thing I'll change here is switching to compounding returns. We can hit save once we're happy with our selections. We now have our test portfolio. Depending on your Nivexa plan, we can load between one portfolio on the basic plan to 10 on their pro plan. I'll cover those off later in the video. Clicking into our portfolio, we don't currently have any holdings. We can simply press the add investments button. Here, we have two options. We can either load our trades one by one manually or import those from a broker. A third option we have, which sits under the latter option, is to load our trades from a spreadsheet, which is faster than the first option, but likely slower than the second option. If you want to get started with Nivexa and say you work with Sharesies, which they don't have an integration with, this might be an option you could use. Starting with a manual trade, we select our holding type. Selecting stock, we need to type in our stock or fund name. I can either type it out as the company name, such as Apple, or simply type their ticker, AAPL. If instead I write Vanguard, all of the Vanguard funds start to pop up. I can also load my super funds as well. For example, if I type Host Plus, 
their funds start popping up. Typing in Apple once again, we can either provide Nevexa, our opening balance, with an average cost base, or go line by line loading our buy and sell trades with the below information. So that's the slowest option. Heading back through the breadcrumbs, we can import our holdings from a broker. Nevexa allows you to import your trades from some of the largest brokers from around the world. As you can see here, from the likes of Stake and Comsec in Australia to Robinhood and Coinbase in the US. If you're from New Zealand, unfortunately they don't currently support the likes of Sharesies, so here you'll either have to load them manually or through the spreadsheet option. Scrolling back to the top of the page, and if we click on Comsec, you can see the two ways of getting your trades into Nuvexa from your broker. The first method is email forwarding. Here, Nuvexa gives you instructions on how to tell your broker, in this case Comsec, to email Nevexa with your trades after they've taken place through your brokerage accounts. Going back, the second option we have is to export a CSV from our broker and import it into Nevexa. Here we get instructions once again to set this up. The first option is generally easier as Nevexa will update your latest trades automatically from the emails without needing extra work. Finally, we come up with our third method of importing trades right at the bottom of the broker list and that's a CSV upload. I'll click stocks here and I've already prepared a file with a few trades in Vanguard's Boo Fund and stocks in Apple, BHP and Commonwealth Bank. Once the file has been uploaded, we need to specify where in the grid our column headers are. If correct, hit yes. Now we go one by one, fixing any errors and mapping the columns of our file. As you can see, I had one mismatch. All I need to do is select from the dropdown what the correct column is, in this case, brokerage fee. I continue to confirm the mapping and then click next. Nevexa then proceeds to upload the file and I get a summary of my trades. Hitting save, I have now uploaded my portfolio. So this is my view of the total portfolio. To spice it up, let's add some crypto. I go add holding, add trade manually, cryptocurrency, and let's add some Dogecoin. Let's say I bought a thousand units in it a year ago at seven cents in USD and I paid a dollar in trade fees. Hitting add crypto and heading back to my portfolio, I can now see it appears here alongside my stocks. In my portfolio here, I have a little under $25,000. Down the bottom, you can select the currency. In my case, it's in the Australian dollar. We also get this chart, which shows us how the value of our portfolio has changed over time. At the top left, we can select different time horizons with all the data below it updating. This can be useful to drill down into the factors which contributed to your portfolio returns for a given time period. The custom option is another handy tool to really narrow down the period you're looking at. Alongside portfolio value, we have capital gain. This reflects how much the value of our holdings has increased or decreased in numeric terms for our given time period. For the sample data that I've plugged in, it has risen at a CAGR of 7% a year, which is pretty fair. Next along is the income return. Some stocks pay a dividend, so here we can see that captured, which does of course contribute to our true portfolio returns. Along from there, we have our currency gain which in this case is a heavy currency loss of nearly $2,000. Some of our investments were made in the United States, which are of course denominated in the US dollar. As the Australian dollar appreciates relative to the US dollar, here we'll see a currency loss as we bought US dollars at a higher price than what they're now worth. When trading in overseas stocks, this should always be a key consideration. Overall, using this test data, our return is a pretty poor 80 bucks, largely due to the loss we saw on currency. This is the true return that Nvexa aims to show. On the surface, our stocks appreciated in value, but on the back end, the currency was hurting our portfolio and our dividends are what propped us up to be in a slight profit position. Below the chart, we can see each of our investments, which have a bit of data on each. We have our current stock price alongside our average buy price. If we bought 10 units in Apple at $100 and another 10 at $200, essentially we'd divide the $3,000 that we've invested by our 20 stocks to arrive at an average trade price of $150. It's the same calculation here. We then have the quantity of units owned, the current value of those, and our return data. If you want to customize this view, we have a drop down here that has other useful data, such as weighting. There is also a toggle for sold holdings, which will remove those from the list of stocks that we've since sold out of completely. And finally, you can export the list of investments as a PDF or Excel file. In the test data, 
that I've used, I've also included a couple sell trades. Above the chart, we can remove sold positions from our return calculations and charts, or sort the holdings list into groups, such as by exchange, sector, currency, or a few others. You also have the option of setting up your own groups. Let's now jump over into the overview tab. We get the same chart that we had before, but a bit more information about those sorting categories. There are four views here. We can change the time horizon at the top left of the page, or the way the data is expressed in the top right corner of the view itself into capital gains, returns, or total value. First is the holding performance, similar to what we saw just before. Vanguard's VU fund has provided the greatest capital gains of over $1,500, while BHP and Apple have gone backwards. The second view is performance. ETFs don't generally have a sector, but we can see financials for CBA and crypto for our Dogecoin below it. We can also change from a sector breakdown to any of the below as you can see here. If we click out of that and then we click the view button below, we get a new breakdown of how our investments have performed. Just like we saw earlier, at the top right we can select how to sort our data. If we select exchange, we can see our investments on the ASX, once all factors are considered, gave us the greatest returns of over $400. NASDAQ, on the other hand, didn't perform so well, down over $700. Apple stock fell by about $160, or the currency weakened by $600 here. So this is a great tool for dissecting your returns and confidently explaining what factors led to your portfolio performance. Heading back, our third view is of our income return. Income, of course, relates to dividends and interest income, which is paid by companies to its owners. Vanguard's VU ETF has given us the greatest income returns here, while Dogecoin, as a non-income generating cryptocurrency, hasn't paid any income. Many stocks and ETFs don't pay dividend income either, so not everything will show here. Clicking on the view button, we can see the breakdown of these income payments and when they were received. Heading back, our fourth view shows us our portfolio's diversification. This, of course, relates to how concentrated our portfolio is according to a few factors, such as specific stocks, sectors, currencies, among several other factors. This is important to investors as a form of risk mitigation. For example, if 90% of our investments are in the United States and the US dollar depreciates relative to the Australian dollar, 90% of our portfolio will be negatively affected. Here we can change the groupings once again at the top right so we can see how concentrated our portfolio is by sector, currency and several other factors. Clicking the view button, again we get a better view of this with all the usual sorting and filtering options. Under the performance tab, we have a few other options to explore. First is benchmark analysis. This allows us to reference how well our portfolio has performed relative to another financial metric. For example, if I hit the edit benchmark button below the chart here, I can either select a predefined common benchmark index, such as the S&P 500 or the ASX 200, or I can just key in a stock, ETF or crypto itself. Down the bottom, you can even compare your own portfolios in the VEXA if you have more than one. Here, I'll just select the S&P 500. And as you can see, my test portfolio data has underperformed relative to the index. My investments didn't see their price go up by as much as the S&P 500 index, and the negative currency gain eroded much of my returns. I did, however, outperform with my income returns. So here you can see how the portfolio has performed relative to the S&P 500 index. Scrolling down, we can see what factors outperformed our benchmark and those that underperformed. If we switch away from the exchanges and select currency instead, you can see my Australian investments were actually really good and outperformed the index, while it was my American investments that pulled me down. So this can be a really useful tool to investors to really drill down into the factors that affected returns. We can combine this tool with the diversification screen that we saw before to work out if we need to adjust our investment weightings moving forwards. The next two options under performance we saw before. Contributions was under the performance view and diversification, of course, was under the diversification view. The fourth under that tab is growth and goals. This can be a handy tool to set a target portfolio value and track towards it. Putting in some random data here, working towards a portfolio value of $30,000 starting a month ago and trying to get there by October 
this is what we get. Nevexa create a chart with a dotted line between when we start it and when we want to achieve the goal. It then overlays this with how our portfolio has performed so we know whether we're on track or falling behind. With the charts below, this can be handy for some users. Back under the performance tab, income contributions we saw earlier under the income return view. The next one up is the income calendar, which is a fantastic tool for dividend investors. We can see, based on our current holdings, what dividends we can expect to receive over the coming months. At the moment, you can see all the records are estimated based on previous years. If there is an announcement of dividend details, we'd see that appear here. So this can be a useful tool if you're dividend investing. Finally, under the performance tab, we have the option to view all of our trades, showing this breakdown here, and all dividends, showing what we've earned to date from our investments. The final tab is tax reporting. This is the place to go for all of your Australian tax calculations. Those who hate doing their taxes every year will probably get the most value out of these screens. The first item here is overview. As we just imported our portfolio data, we need to confirm our past dividend income. Nevexa needs this for confirming the income we've earned from our shares. Up the top, we click fix, and we just need to go one by one through these transactions to confirm they were received and the freaking credits are correct. Once that is done, head back to the previous screen. Under the summary data, we have a few tax reports available to us. The first of these is the ATO MyTax form. Opening this, we can see all of the items we must disclose to the ATO for the year. This is broken down into two parts capital gains and taxable income, and Nevexa can create a more detailed report of each. Clicking the CGT report button, we can see how this tax disclosure has arisen. The test data had two sales, one for CVA for five shares, and another for VU when we sold two units. Both made slight gains, with the total being just over $130. Heading back, we can produce a similar report for taxable income. Nevexa makes it easy to find the information the ATO is looking for each year in your tax return. Down the bottom, the report gives a breakdown of which investments generated a return. There are two other items under the tax reporting tab, namely historical cost and unrealized gain. Historical cost is useful to identify the original cost of making an investment. This can be difficult when shares have been bought and sold often. Nevexa applies a FIFO methodology, making it much easier to produce a report like this. The final screen is unrealized gains, which reflects how your portfolio value has changed on paper. If you haven't sold your investment and its value has appreciated, this is what is called an unrealized gain. So that summarizes some of the main features of Nevexa. You also have a help button at the bottom right of the screen, powered by Intercom, which is similar to what many brokerages use too. During Australian business hours, you'll be able to speak directly with customer support. At the top right of the screen, you have a plus button to add a new holding and a magnifying glass, which is useful if you want to research one of your investments. If I type AAPL, for example, I can see my investment details relating directly to Apple stock. I can also see how many other users of Nevexa own Apple, which is currently over 2,000. I can also click through and see my trades in Apple stock income earned, store notes against the investments, and play around with a few of the settings. Heading back to the top right options, I have a notifications bell, a help screen option, and my account settings. At the bottom of every screen in Nevexa is a let us know button. Earlier in this video, I mentioned Nevexa is constantly on the lookout for new tools and features. Here, you can make those suggestions. If you like the look of Nevexa and want to give it a go yourself, use my link down below or in the video description to sign up. This gives you a 20% discount on all of these plans that you can see here. You also have a 14 day free trial, so you can give Nevexa a try before committing. Currently, Nevexa offer four plans to choose from. Their most basic plan is the basic package, which allows you to create a single portfolio and get access to simple reporting. One level up from there, and the most popular package is the standard one, which offers up to three portfolios, improved customer support, and access to the full suite of reports. The next package is the premium bundle, which best suits those investors managing several portfolios. You have access to 10 portfolios and prioritize support from Nevexa. Unless you're managing money across several entities or on behalf of others, 
this might be overkill. And finally, we have the Pro Package. Basically, you have access to an unlimited number of portfolios, which is only really required if you're a financial advisor for countless people. For a slightly higher price, you can also pay monthly if that's something that you prefer. I've included a link down below to check out Nivex's plans and check out the website and whether it might work for you. Free trials are available, so make sure to check them out risk-free. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe down below to see more content just like this in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.